22.2 specific groups exercise prescription. Exercise prescription is defined as an instruction written by a medical practitioner that authorises a patient to be issued with a medicine or treatment. The prescription is very specific for the client as the medical practitioner will give them a specific set of instructions to do, such as if they need to try and lower their blood pressure, they may ask them to start jogging in order to try and help this. The medical, the medical practitioner will also provide them and tell them what intensity how frequent and how long for they should be doing this in order to try and work on it. The purpose of an exercise prescription is to help with the client improve their overall health. We're also looking at contraindications. There are two different types of contraindications which are absolute and relative. An absolute contraindication is where under no circumstances should a performer be allowed to undergo exercise testing. Now an example of an absolute contraindication is that if a performer suffers from any severe illness or disease, they are not allowed to perform exercise because it will be a great risk to their health. On the other hand, a relative contraindication is where the performer can perform exercise but must be supervised and should do exercise with caution to make sure no harm is brought to themselves. And an example of a relative contraindication contraindication would be if a performer is suffering from any high or low blood pressure they should be wary of this and should be cautious of it before doing exercise because it may be a risk to the client's health. We then went on to looking at three specific groups. My first group I looked at was younger people. Now some contraindications that can prevent younger people from partaking in exercise is injury, illness, and a specific example of some sort of medicine is aspirin. Uh, the reason for injury being a contraindication to younger people is that, for example, if you have a knee injury such as osteostatus disease, which is a common cause of knee pain in growing adolescents, it is an inflammation of the area just below the knee where the tendon from the kneecap attaches to the shin bone. This can mean that when exercising, it can cause further damage to make the injury more severe, which can then mean that they are no, which can then mean that they are out for a sustained period of time, which can mean that they are unable to train, and will therefore not be able to maintain their fitness levels, and will then have to come back and work on them again in order to get where they were before the injury. Illness is also a contraindication because if the performer is suffering from an illness such as nausea. Exercise can add to this to make it worse and cause them to become more ill. This can have severe negative effects on their life and can mean that they are not able to train as often and therefore can lead to further possible diseases due to lack of exercise they are getting. Finally, a specific example is aspirin, which is an absolute contraindication because if a performer is recovering from a viral disease and they use aspirin when they exercise, Whilst taking aspirin, it will cause a swelling in the brain, which can lead to severe problems or possibly fatality, which is why it's an absolute contraindication and under no circumstances should someone perform exercise whilst taking it. Some prescriptions for younger people is that they can do almost any type of training, however it should never be excessive. For example, a younger person can do weight training, however it should not be excessive and they should not be lifting any more than their own body weight. This is because it can cause a deformation in the, of the growth plates in their body and can actually stop the growth plates from working overall, which can hinder their growth. Another prescription would be not to do any high impact training as it can cause severe injury to the joints and bones such as osteoarthritis or osteoporosis which can affect them later in life as their bones become much more brittle and are more likely to break. Bone damage can also cause the performer to stop training altogether depending on the severity. This lack of exercise can lead to further potential disease such as obesity, which then causes more diseases to occur. An example of a training session I would have them carry out is a one hour circuit training session, which would involve the use of weighted lunges, skipping, ladder drills and the treadmill. This circuit session would last around an hour 
and therefore they would spend 15 minutes on each section of the circuit. The skipping would be for 3 minutes straight with a 30 second recovery in between each set, and should be performed at 70% of their maximum heart rate. This is because skipping continuously is a good way to try and build up their aerobic capacity. And the reason we do it at a high intensity is that it can benefit them more and increase their aerobic capacity further than doing it at a low intensity. We then went on to the weighted lunges, which use a 10 kilogram weight, so it isn't too heavy, and perform 10 lunges of three sets with a minute recovery in between. This will help to work on muscular endurance, which can help with everyday tasks. We then went on to look at the ladder drills, which will be mainly agility focused drills involving quick steps and turns. It will involve 10 runs through the ladder of three sets and should be performed at around 80% of their maximum heart rate. So it's mainly a sprint, which will help them improve on their agility a lot further than it would be if they were exercising at a lower intensity. Finally, the treadmill will be a continuous run for 15 minutes, working at 60 to 80% of their maximum heart rate. Tread treadmills have the same effect as skipping, however, skipping has the additional component of increasing power. Using the treadmill works uh, lots of major muscle groups within the body, mainly in the legs. It also helps to increase aerobic capacity, and therefore, this means that when they come back uh, to playing games, they will find out that their stamina is much higher and will be able to. And for example, if they're in a football game, they'll be able to last longer than other players due to their increased aerobic capacity. This training session should be done three to four times a week, so it's most beneficial and improves each component of fitness that is being worked on. And over time, it should hopefully. see the most benefits come out of the plan. Now the next group we looked at was older people. Some contraindications uh, of older people performing exercises is that they have a high blood pressure. Uh, they can also they're also more susceptible to diseases such as osteoporosis and arth osteoarthritis. And as you get older you're more likely to develop some heart diseases. High blood pressure is a relative contraindication, which means that a person can partake in exercise, however they should be monitored. The reason for high blood pressure being a relative contraindication is that for older people when doing exercise, it can possibly lead to severe injury. An increase in blood pressure can cause weakening of the blood vessels, which means that blood may not be able to circulate through the body, which means that it may not be able to get back to the heart, and therefore may cause a heart attack or possibly fatality. Another type of contraindication is osteoarthritis and osteoporosis, which are both types of relative contraindication. As uh, osteoarthritis can affect exercise as they are more likely to break their bones as they are so brittle. Also, Osteoporosis and osteoarthritis can make for longer recovery times due to the aches and pains that they feel, which means that they are unable to train as frequently and therefore can lead to further diseases due to the lack of exercise and can possibly see the benefits they, they made when training possibly be reversed. The lack of exercise can mean a build-up of fatty acids in the arteries depending on their diet, which can lead to potential blood clots and therefore an a further increase in blood pressure which then cause severe injuries and severe cardiovascular problems. Uh, some prescriptions for older people when doing exercise is to do it at a low intensity and try and do low impact exercises. This is because it will help to maintain fitness levels and help to maintain strength which will benefit them with everyday life and to perform everyday tasks such as getting out of the chair and pick it, or picking themselves up when they're falling over. However, they should try and avoid any high impact exercises as it will damage bones and make them more likely to break. Another type of exercise that they should avoid is isometric exercises as they cause a big increase in blood pressure as the arteries are squeezed by the, muscle, by the muscles and therefore trap the blood in the arteries which causes the increase in blood pressure. Older people should also try and 
avoid high intensity exercises because it causes a further increase in blood pressure as they need more blood to supply to the working muscles which means the heart has to work much harder and therefore is pump pumping out more blood and therefore causes the increase within the arteries. Overall, older people should try and perform low intensity and low impact exercises so they can maintain their fitness levels but also not injure themselves whilst exercising. An example of a typical session would be a 45 minute circuit training session involving resistance bands, battle ropes and Russian twists. The Russian twist can be weighted with a 6 kilogram weight and will be 8 reps of 3 sets with a 40 second recovery in between sets. This will help to work on muscular endurance, which will help them with everyday tasks such as travelling or walking places. Next we then looked at the battle ropes, which will consist of two different types, which will be waves and slams, which will be four, four sets, two sets of each type, for one minute at a time working continuously with a minute recovery in between sets. This also helps to work on power, strength and also muscular endurance, which is very beneficial to older people as it can help them to perform everyday tasks. Finally, we looked at resistance bands, which will, in, which will mainly work on strength as it will include bicep curls and will be three sets of 10 reps with a minute recovery in between sets. This works on strength and therefore will be able to help them with everyday tasks such as getting out of the chair or picking themselves up when they're falling over. This this training session should be should be done around two to three times a week to make sure that it's benefiting the person. And therefore, if they were to carry on doing this every week for around six weeks, you would see the most benefit come out of the session. Finally, we'll be looking at the final group, which is obesity. Some contraindications for obese people when performing exercise is atherosclerosis which is the fatty deposits in the arteries which can cause them to narrow. Some other types of contraindications are type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Looking back at atherosclerosis, narrowing of the arteries causes an increase in the blood pressure of the performer and therefore means that there is a weakening of the arteries which means that they could burst and therefore means that blood cannot be distributed to certain parts of the body. It can also lead to, possibly lead to fatality if a main artery is blocked, such as the pulmonary artery which leads to the heart. Type 2 diabetes can also cause problems with your heart and nerves, as it can cause them to slow down and therefore may not be able to pump enough blood around the body to meet the body's demands when exercising. This means that they're not getting enough oxygenated blood to the working muscles, which means that they may have to stop exercise. Another type of contraindication for older people is coronary heart disease, which they are more susceptible, as they, susceptible to as they get older. Coronary heart disease is also a build-up of fat, however it is in and surrounding the heart, which can cause it to not function at its optimum level, which means that the body is not supplied with enough oxygenated blood to meet its demands. Prescription for obese people is to try and do HIT training, which stands for high intensity interval training. This is because it is very high intensity and therefore will help them to lose weight and try and remove these fatty deposits from in the heart and the arteries. It also, therefore, it helps to control diseases such as coronary heart disease. Most forms of training will help, such as continuous and interval, as they will help to try and lose weight. This can help to try and prevent more diseases from occurring and will remove the fatty deposits to try and reduce the effects of the disease. With the weight loss, it will benefit them with everyday tasks such as moving around the house, walking and travelling to places without assistance. This can help them overall to boost their self-confidence. An example of a typical session for this group would be a continuous session. This is because it will help with losing weight. This session will involve the use of battle ropes, treadmills and steps. The steps will be stepping on and off the bench for a minute at a time for three sets and should be performed at 70% of their maximum heart rate, which will help with losing weight and will also help with muscular endurance, which will help them with everyday life. The battle ropes will be waves and slams for a minute at a time with a 45 second rest in between sets and will be six sets.